The Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All-Hit Radio! Welcome to the X-Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome back to the X-Zone, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell, coming to you from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Worldwide toll-free, 1-800-610-7035. If you'd like to send an email, xzone at xzoneradiotv.com. On MSN Messenger, xzoneradiotv at hotmail.com. And our website, www.xzoneradiotv.com. My guest this hour is Jeff Dwyer. We're talking about ghost hunting. Jeff attended the East Bay campus of the California State University, the University of California at Berkeley, and the University of Southern California, earning a bachelor's degree, two master's of science degrees, and a PhD in the medical sciences. He has held positions at various medical schools as a professor of medical physiology, a research associate professor of anesthesiology, and a researcher in the hyperbaric medicine. Now, these jobs took him west to Hawaii, east to North Carolina, south to Panama City, Florida, and back to Southern uh, California. Now, moving away from research to academia in recent years, Jeff has had a variety of experiences in um, in intensive care units, the rehabilitation centers and medical clinics in Southern California and San Francisco Bay Area hospitals. Numerous paranormal experiences in hospitals and other clinical settings intensified Jeff's interest in ghost and afterlife phenomena and prompted him to write his first book, Ghost Hunter's Guide to the San Francisco Bay Area. This was followed by his second book, Ghost Hunter's Guide to Los Angeles. Jeff's third book, delayed by Hurricane Mm -hmm. Katrina, is Ghost Hunter's Guide to New Orleans. It was released in September of 2007. That highly successful book was followed in June of 2008 with Ghost Hunter's Guide to Seattle. And in September of 2009, Ghost Hunter's Guide to California's Gold Rush Country. Joining me is Jeff Dwyer. And Jeff, welcome to the X-Zone. Well, thank you very much. It's great to be with you, Rob. Son of a gun. Uh, All your credentials, academia, medical, and you believe in ghosts. Yes, and some people think that's quite strange, but uh, my colleagues don't. In fact, I'm often asked what mm-hmm. people I work with, what they think of me, and I have to tell them they're very interested in what I do, and they they don't uh, look at me askance as though I'm some crazy person. You know, my wife is a nurse, and uh, she works in, in all branches of medicine. And I'll tell you, when we go to any function at the hospitals that she works at, I hear stories from nurses doctors, orderlies, and, and, and visitors to hospitals about ghosts, apparitions, as well as communication with the other side. Oh, yes. It's actually quite common among people who work in healthcare fields because we work so closely with people who are uh, near death mm-hmm. um, and, and staying with families after death you know, to, to support them during the grieving process. And we're also with people who are chronically ill who know that ultimately they're yeah. going to succumb to their illness. And so there's a lot of, of really in-depth conversations you have with these people. And hospitals are very haunted locations, too. It's tough to investigate them if you're a ghost hunter, of course, because of the privacy. Jeff, you and I have got to run to our commercial break. I've held back as long as I can, okay. but we'll be back in two minutes. Jeff Dwyer is our special guest, www.jeffdwyer.com. Don't go away. This is going to be a great hour.
Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Hi everyone, Rob McConnell here, and I wanted to spend a moment on internet streaming. Everybody has heard about internet streaming, but not many know much about it. Did you know the internet streams just about everything? Movies. From new releases to old classics. TV shows. Almost every show, every episode, and much more. But the question has always been, how do you do it? Well now, thanks to the folks at 123 Ready TV, I have the answer for you. They have developed a simple program app, 123 Ready TV, that you install on your Windows PC, Android smartphone, or Android tablet that can have you streaming like a pro in less than five minutes. You truly won't believe how much is available or how easy it is to do until you try. And for a one-time cost of only $19.99, sense this product is a real winner to learn more about 123 ready tv visit our website at www.xzbn.net Hello, I'm Justina Marsh, and with my dad, Pete, we are going to present a new show called Too Good to Be True. Together, we are aiming to discover more truths about this world and beyond. Do you have unanswered questions about the world? Do you ever wonder about aliens, conspiracy theories, or the universe? There are many shows discussing subjects such as pyramids or UFOs, but we want to relay this information based on our own research, including from spiritual means. Hopefully, listeners will be helped with their own beliefs and will appreciate the psychic insights that add to the previous research and information. We both look forward to sharing this insight and beginning this journey with our listeners. Visit xzbn.net for more information about when to listen. Exxon Nation, Jeff Dwyer is our special guest. We're talking about ghost hunters this hour in the Exxon. And uh, Jeff's website is www.jeffdwyer.com. Jeff, before we went to the break, we were talking about the stories that abound in hospitals. And, you know, people working in the hospital work so closely with people, not only those who who are leaving the hospitals, but in in many cases with the families of those who have passed away while in hospital and in other, in other departments of the hospital where those who are very close to passing themselves, you know, there's a bond that forms between patients, nursing staff, as well as the doctors, even though it's so hard, you know, you're not supposed to, but, but it inevitably happens. How do you, you know, how do you go about investigating these with the privacy issues that you and I alluded to before the break? It's extremely difficult. In fact, most of the investigations that we hear about of hospitals are actually hospitals that are no longer functioning mm-hmm. for patient care. They've either been taken over as administrative centers or they're closed up. And some of the paranormal shows we've seen on TV recently, groups have been to uh, the hospital in Los Angeles, uh, some insane asylums on the East Coast. Mm-hmm. Those are popular venues for, for ghost hunting. If you work inside of a hospital or have a legitimate reason to be there, you can keep your eyes and ears open, and you may see and hear some astounding things, even in a well-lit facility during daylight hours. Most of the reports I hear from uh, staff at the hospital actually come from engineers and housekeeping who are there through the night, perhaps on a wing that may be closed up for a time being, and the engineers will tell me about uh, items they're working with that are missing and then turn up in a strange place. For instance, a toolbox that was left out on the floor uh, as an engineer fixed a light fixture. Mm-hmm. It's gone and then it's found down the hall inside a refrigerator. Huh. 
you know, that's it's not likely that anybody would come along and just do that as a prank. Let me I'll let me ask you that. this before before yeah. we move on to the next uh, to to your next point. If spirits have no physical essence, if ghosts have no physical essence, Jeff, how can they move stuff? That's the real question that remains. In fact, I've been dealing with this issue a lot lately. People have asked me, what are ghosts made of? And we're Mm -hmm. pretty certain they're not made up of atoms, perhaps neutrinos, which are subatomic particles. But they may be some sort of psychic energy. And then the question remains, how can they move objects? Yeah. And I have no answer for that right now. I know people are researching that, uh, but no one is coming up with a valid reason for it. How did you become uh, a, a paranormal expert and uh, the guy to go to on uh, ghost hunting? Well, it was a long process. I did a lot of investigations for many, many years, keeping them pretty much to myself. And then I decided to start writing mm-hmm. my books and also to posting information on my website. And I, I became the go-to guy because... Um, I'm one of the few people who was really trying to look into the nature of ghostly activity and to divide it up into the different different parts of paranormal. We we have ghosts, but we also have hauntings, which are environmental imprints created by living people. But because there's no known explanation for these, they're considered paranormal. I've also looked into poltergeists. And I posted all this information on my website and spoke about it at meetings and at book signings and television and radio. Mm -hmm. And I guess it has hit a number of soft spots with people, and they feel that that I am the person who has the information. And because of my research background, I can can dissect some of these things from a scientific perspective and then bring into it the non-scientific viewpoint as well. Not to mention you're a very credible person. Well, thank you. You know, People not. wonder how I can combine my science background mm-hmm. with my belief in ghosts, and I don't think they're mutually exclusive. No, I think you can bring a science background to be a reasonable skeptic, but I've had so many experiences I can't explain that that is, in fact, why I believe in the existence of ghosts. What has been the experience that you have had in the past, Jeff, that has just, to this very day, boggled your mind? It actually occurred in broad daylight in the uh, in the desert in Nevada called the Black Rock Desert. Mm-hmm. I was on a long horseback ride, 120 miles, and was leaving camp early one morning and thought I saw two riders returning to camp, but I noticed they were dressed in buckskins, not the typical garb that people in our group were wearing. As they got closer, I could see they had long rifles across their lap, and nobody was carrying firearms in our group. And... I could see the astounding detail of not only the riders but the horses, and then the images of these two riders simply vanished before my eyes. And I turned to look at my horse to see if he noticed because he often reacted to other horses mm-hmm. and he looked like he was asleep. And as I turned around, I saw the riders heading off in another direction, and I watched them for about 30, 40 seconds, and they faded away again. But this is broad daylight, complete apparitions not only of the riders but the horses, and in complete detail to the extent that they look completely lifelike. So it goes against the grain of most of the ghost reports that we hear about, of yeah. something showing up at 3 in the morning in a darkened space, mm-hmm. and it's partial or it's very, very uh, incomplete in terms of detail. It was complete opposite to that. T- tell me, Jeff, while, he, while you were watching the horses, did you, just, did you happen to notice if the horses were kicking up dust as they were galloping? That's it's interesting you should bring that up because the, there was no dust. Wow. No, they weren't. And yet my other horses in the yeah. group certainly did that. And that suggests to me that they had no, no physical component to them. How is it some people can actually see apparitions and other people can't? That's another good question. Some of us have a talent just as some of us can play the piano and some of others would have no hope of ever gaining that skill. Mm-hmm. Um, I have an innate sensitivity to that, but I've I've worked on ways of increasing sensitivity to paranormal phenomenon, and I write about those methods in my book. So if people want to find out how to increase their sensitivity, they can pick up one of my books. In each book, I describe this technique. Uh, it has a lot to do with, with uh, using a meditation technique simply to clear the mind of all the distractions, the mental distractions that go on constantly, and also to seal ourselves against external distractions and then enable us to focus on the entity that we seek. 
It has a lot to do with that. And once you become skilled at this, you'd be surprised at what you hear and see and feel around you. Jeff, what do you believe is the biggest myth or the biggest misconception pertaining to ghosts? I think that's that ghosts are frightening and uh, intend harm. Uh, people make a big mistake about that. Even some of the mm-hmm. paranormal investigators that we see on some of the television shows, they'll encounter something that they're seeking, either a sound or a an image, and scream and yell and uh, and run from the site. And I don't understand that behavior at all. Uh, ghosts very often are simply trying to get our attention, and they may do that by touching, hitting, scratching even, moving objects, making sounds that are mm-hmm. unexpected, somewhat frightening perhaps, but they're really trying to get our attention. They're not trying to hurt us, um, and uh, I, th- I think people need to understand that. To your knowledge, Jeff, in all the research that you've done in and communicating with other members of the paranormal community, have you ever heard of anyone being physically harmed by a ghost? Well, yeah, I I have to say that that I have. I mean, I have myself. I mean, but it's a mild degree of physical harm. I've been scratched and kicked and pushed and that sort of thing. But it, you know, you feel it, and it doesn't hurt. I've seen video of people. Uh, being struck by their camera bag, for instance. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it, it hurt a bit, uh, but it, they weren't you know, seriously injured. I've heard of that sort of thing. I have not heard of anyone having a serious injury. And I think any injuries that occur to that extent uh, may have happened because a person might have run from a, a paranormal experience, you know, turned and sure. run in a darkened space and tripped over something or went through a glass window or hit uh, wires suspended from a ceiling in an abandoned house. Uh, Occasionally you hear about that sort of thing. I I think you can't blame the ghost for that. No, definitely not. Definitely not. But I haven't heard of people being pushed down the stairs and becoming a quadriplegic or having a ghost grab the steering wheel of their car and Mm -hmm. causing an automobile accident or anything like that. Why is it some places remain haunted? Wouldn't these spirits, wouldn't these ghosts want to move on, or do they actually enjoy staying in haunted places and scaring the hell out of people? (laughs) Well, I don't know if they're there to scare the hell out of people, but there are a lot of ghosts who feel perhaps uh, fearful of moving on. Mm -hmm. Supposedly there's this light and you cross over or go through a tunnel, and perhaps some people think there's a judgment waiting on the other side, or they might fear... Uh, meeting up with people to whom they were were unkind ah. or uh, in a, in their life, they might fear that. But all I think, for the most part, they find that the place they're in as a ghost is comforting to them. They they might have um, suffered a lot of emotional anguish during the transition from life to death, and they found a place that they feel comfortable. They feel protected. It's familiar, and they simply want to stay there. One other theory is that they might find people, or I should say spirits, that comfort them. On the USS Hornet, which is a retired aircraft carrier in Alameda, California, there are many ghosts, perhaps as many as 600 on that ship, but it's believed that most of them didn't die on the ship or in any way connected with the ship. It's simply a magnet, if you will, for spirits who were in the Navy who found that this is a comforting place with colleagues who had a common experience when alive. Interesting. Please stand by. Jeff, you and I have to take a commercial break with the news at the bottom of the hour. Exonation, our very special guest this hour, Jeff Dwyer. www.jeffdwyer.com. That's J E W F D W Y E R. That's www.jeffdwyer.com. And Jeff and I will be back together here in the Exxon on the other side of the news as we continue from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. On the Talkstar Radio Network, Exxon Broadcast Network, UK High Definition Radio, Euro High Definition Radio, Star Cable, and of course, Exxon TV. Don't go away, we'll be back on the other side of the news. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network. Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. 
For more information on the X Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Hi everyone, Rob McConnell here, and I wanted to spend a moment on internet streaming. Everybody has heard about internet streaming, but not many know much about it. Did you know the internet streams just about everything? Movies. From new releases to old classics. TV shows. Almost every show, every episode, and much more. But the question has always been, how do you do it? Well now, thanks to the folks at 123 Ready TV, I have the answer for you. They have developed a simple program app, 123 Ready TV, that you install on your Windows PC, Android smartphone, or Android tablet that can have you streaming like a pro in less than five minutes. You truly won't believe how much is available or how easy it is to do until you try. And for a one-time cost of only $19.99, this product is a real winner. To learn more about 123 Ready TV, visit our website at www.xzbn.net. Jeff Dwyer's my special guest this hour, XO Nation. Jeff is the author of Ghost Hunter's Guide to San Francisco Bay Area, Ghost Hunter's Guide to Los Angeles, Ghost Hunter's Guide to New Orleans, Ghost Hunter's Guide to Seattle, and Ghost Hunter's Guide to California Gold Rush Country. His website is www.jeffdwyer.com. And that's www.jeffdwyer.com. Jeff, in all the research that you have done, where has been the most haunted place you have visited? I think it's the Queen Mary in Long Beach, California. Uh, that ship is mm-hmm. reputed to have over 500 spirits on board. Um, many of them died on board. In fact, the vast majority died on board, including 372 sailors who died on an escort vessel that the Queen Mary rammed during World War II. Uh, the collision opened up a huge gash in the bow of the Queen Mary, and 372 sailors were sucked in from the escort vessel. And oh, died. gosh. So they are there, uh, numerous passengers, crew, uh, prisoners of war who were transported on the ship uh, during World War II. Uh, they comprise the spirit population of the Queen Mary. And every time I've been on that ship, I've had some really uh, impressive paranormal experiences. Can you share a few of them with us? Yeah, I've seen uh, apparitions, heard sounds, and um, uh, felt people touching me, heard numerous voices in my ear, bursts of music from big bands from the, the 40s and the 50s. Uh, the last time I was on board, I, I woke up in the middle of the night to get a drink of water, and there was a woman leaning over my bed dressed pretty much like Jackie Kennedy used to dress, you know, the little pillbox hat and the, the tailored suit. And I don't know if she occupied the room at one time or was a, a hostess of some sort, but she was just standing there leaning over my bed looking at me. Didn't say anything, but it was mm-hmm. clear as, as day, literally quite detailed apparition. Stayed there for 20, 30 seconds, and as she stood up again, smiled and disappeared. Have and, you... you know, we've heard all kinds of sounds on that ship from uh, noises next door, and then in the morning we find out there's no compartment next door to mm-hmm. us. Yeah, you know, so uh, n- numerous experiences. Jeff, have you ever had any intelligent communication with a spirit? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have. In fact, that's an important definition of having a ghostly experience. There's so many things that are paranormal mm-hmm. that are not ghostly. Uh, in order to say you've had a ghostly encounter, there has to be an intelligent interaction uh, with between the ghost and a witness or the environment. And the intelligent interaction with the environment might be the movement of something or a message found scribbled on a pad of paper or something of this sort. Uh, An intelligent interaction with a witness uh, might be direct eye contact gestures made by the ghost or receiving uh, some sort of uh, auditory message. Uh, They might speak to you. And Yes, I've I've received many, many of these things. What what kind of intelligent communication have you yourself received from a from a ghost? Well, I've I've had answers to my questions. You know, I've often when we do investigations, we'll have recorders running and we'll ask questions like, you know, did you die here? Mm-hmm. Uh, did, 
Uh, were you murdered? Uh, how old are you? What are your names? Uh, what's your name? And we will get uh, intelligent answers to those questions. But are these in, are these intelligence answers via EVP or are they audible right at that time? Well, in in many cases they only show up on the recorder. But in my experience with my sensitivities, mm-hmm. uh, I've heard them as well. And in some cases, I've heard things that didn't show up on the recorders. And we did a TV show on the Queen Mary a couple of years ago and. I heard tremendous noises in the engine room, the first-class swimming pool, and in an old space on the ship that used to be a, a kitchen. It, it really was abandoned at this point, in pretty bad shape when we were in there filming. And the the audio recorders for the, the production company didn't pick up anything. Neither did my handheld recorder, but I heard tremendous sounds and people speaking and the sounds of a fight that took place in this abandoned kitchen. Uh, sounds of the uh, watertight door slamming shut down in the engine room that killed a, a man in 1966. So a lot of times it's it's the sensitivity of the investigator that picks them up and not so much a recorder. You said earlier that uh, you're, you're very attuned to the spirits. And have you always had this ability or did something happen in your life that triggered your ability to communicate with spirits? No, I didn't have any sort of uh, epiphany or or traumatic event Mm -hmm. that transformed me. When I was about 10 years old, I uh, living in an island community in Alameda. I noticed a a man walking down the street past our home, looked like a a sailor in an old-time outfit with a sea bag slung over his shoulder. And he turned to look at me Mm -hmm. and stared at me intently. And as I watched him, he simply faded away before my eyes. So I assumed he was a ghost from the old days when Alameda was a a harbor for sailing vessels. And at that point on, from the age of about 10, I, I found that I had a sensitivity. My friends and I used to sneak into some of these abandoned Victorian mansions, and uh, very often I would hear things and see things that my friends did not hear or see. And from that point on, I realized I had a sensitivity to these things. How do the spirits know that you have this sensitivity, Jeff? Well, I'm not sure that they really have have recognized it in me, but I've, there have been many instances when I've got the impression that the spirit was thankful to have someone to mm. communicate with. I mean, I go into a place and I'll see things and hear things that others don't, but I'm not certain that spirits have suddenly recognized that they have someone in their midst they can communicate with. But I express my interest in them, and I often do that even if I'm not on a formal paranormal investigation. If I get a vibe in a place, whether it's a new structure or an old one, uh, I'll simply say I'm here and I'd be willing to communicate with you and, and you can talk to me, I understand you, and sort of urge them on. And often I'll get whispered messages in my ear or sound. Sometimes they'll say, please get out, or they'll be more forceful and they'll yell at me to get out because they don't want me in their space. But very often I think they're hap- happy to have someone to communicate with. Tell me, Jeff, are there ghosts that hang around graveyards? Because, you know, you see all these ghost tours. They love dragging their customers into graveyards. And and if I was a ghost, and when I become a ghost, the last place I will want to hang around is a graveyard. Well, I think you have the right perspective on this. In fact, a lot of people who, um, who go out ghost hunting think that the graveyard in the middle of the night is the place to go. And serious paranormal investigators have the opposite opinion uh, graveyards are not the place to go, with possibly one exception, and that is that if the grave has been desecrated, mm. uh, damaged by some sort of environmental process, or if the body was put in the wrong grave, it's mismarked, there's a good chance there may be a spirit there trying to correct whatever has gone wrong with that grave. Now, there's a lot of paranormal activity in graveyards, however, but and this is These are environmental imprints created by living people, and these are imprints of emotions, and typically they are repetitive, intense emotions, and we often find them at the graves of children because, as you can imagine, if a child dies, a family will visit that grave several times over a period of decades, perhaps more than that, and pour out their emotions, and this leaves an imprint that sensitives can pick up and also you can pick it up on audio recorders and sometimes as images and digital pictures. Mm-hmm. 
So you may not run into the ghost, the spirit of a dead person yeah. so, so often, but you can find these environmental imprints very readily in graveyards. So is there a place where people or, or paranormal investigators would look for spirits? Uh, would a spirit or a ghost be more likely to be at the place of their passing? For example, if, if, if uh, someone was in a tragic, fatal car accident, would their ghost be more likely to to wander the area near the fatal accident compared to, let's say, their home or, or the or the funeral home where they were exposed and laid out for three days? It's far more likely that in the case of an accident, the ghost will go to it, its home or any other place it felt most comfortable. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's very rare for a ghost to remain act, at an accident site. The instances where that happens, it's usually a case where the ghost is totally confused by the transition from life to death and is fearful of, of moving. Uh, the ghost will not remain inside a, a damaged vehicle as it's hauled away to the junkyard, that sort of thing. But uh, the ghost will go on to, to visit family members most often, and this is usually their home. Mm-hmm. In fact, many people I've met around the hospital tell me that uh, their loved one may have passed away in the intensive care unit, but a couple days later, when the family's gathered at the home and talking about the deceased, uh, everybody's hearing voices, hearing doors close, hearing footsteps that can't be explained, and getting the sense that that person, the deceased, is present in the house at that time. So the person has made the movement from the hospital bed to home, even if that home is some distance away. Is ghost hunting becoming a science, Jeff? A lot of people try to make it into a science, and I don't think they're succeeding very well. If you watch the paranormal shows on television, very often they pull out a lot of gadgets, and yeah. some of them very expensive. You know, infrared uh, video, and they connect them up to computers and process the images, and sometimes have two or three vehicles loaded with very expensive gear. And it's done in the misguided um, uh, notion that they're somehow making their investigations more scientific. I often write about this on my website, that that being equipment heavy in one's investigations does not make the investigation scientific. And many people who pursue this line of investigation don't truly understand the scientific method. Now, in their defense, I'd have to say that I'm not certain you could apply the scientific method to paranormal investigation in many instances because it's very difficult to have control groups and that sort of thing. Ghosts just don't show up whenever you want them to and you can't transport them to a laboratory for investigation. So it may be very difficult or impossible to apply to apply scientific methods to ghost hunting, but having a lot of equipment simply doesn't make it scientific. Now there are people at Duke University and some other places that are investigating paranormal phenomena mm-hmm. such as remote viewing and precognition and things of this sort and they're making some headway but in terms of um, proving or disproving the existence of ghosts people really aren't making any headway at all with all the equipment they have are there are the number of paranormal shows on tv are, are they an asset or a hindrance when it comes to true paranormal research that's a little difficult to answer because we have a mixed bag on television. Some of them, I think, are a hindrance. Um, they are overly emotional. Mm-hmm. And as I mentioned earlier, yeah. we've seen some of these people who are seeking paranormal activity Running but away from it. finding it turn around and scream and run and cry. And, and I think a lot of that is done for dramatic effect mm-hmm. and, and perhaps is not an honest response to what they've encountered. But some shows are are pretty good. Um, now, if you are, if you're somebody who's interested in the technical approach to ghost hunting, things like Ghost Hunters, Ghost Hunters International, and Ghost Adventures, are are pretty good with that. There's always some dramatic element interjected, and I think that's because it's tough to create a show week after week that shows something that is clearly paranormal, especially it's, in the world of reality. When you go out on an investigation, something doesn't always happen. That's exactly right. And there's a lot of groups I know of who go out every weekend and get next to nothing. And often they come back with nothing in spite of 
12 hours spent in a, um, you know, a haunted house or someplace like that. So it's really tough to get something to present on TV. So there's some drama interjected there. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you know the the methodologies displayed uh, can can be quite interesting and can help people understand how to go about a ghost investigation. When I see, when I when I see the people with the infrared and all these other high tech gadgets that they use, talk about special effects. Come on, if if a, if a ghost is really has no essence, it will not show up on infrared. It will exactly. not show up on night vision. Like this is this is, to, in my humble opinion, just a bunch of bunk. Well, exactly, and I've I've said as much. I've said on my website that people who use some of these high tech devices, mm-hmm. including very expensive uh, uh, gadgets, don't understand the limitations of the devices they're using. They like to use electromagnetic field detectors. Yeah. But as we said earlier, if ghosts are not composed of atoms, they're not creating an electromagnetic field. So you can't detect them with that. And many people don't understand calibration. They don't understand test, retest, reliability, and validity, and other scientific concepts. But it looks good on TV to see them schlepping all this equipment. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Hello, I'm Pete Marsh. With my daughter Justina, we will be presenting the new radio show, Too Good to Be True. If something seems too good to be true, it usually is. But with the help of Justina's amazing gifts, we're going to gain insight into questions that don't yet have complete answers. Have you wondered who built Stonehenge and for what reason? Why are crop circles found in the same region as Stonehenge and elsewhere? Are crop circles a hoax or are they created with technologies that we have little knowledge of? Who built the pyramids in Egypt and also in other countries? How and why were they built? Was the Titanic switched with the Britannic as part of a gigantic insurance fraud or for more insidious reasons? What caused the Tunguska event when trees were flattened over an 800 square mile area in Siberia? Will the new insights be too good to be true? Well, that will depend on what you are prepared to believe. Please join us as we start on this journey together. For more information on Too Good To Be True, visit www.xzbn.net. Jeff Dwyer is our special guest this hour, (laughs) www.jeffdwyer.com. First of all, Jeff, great having you with us. Thank you very much for sharing your knowledge, your expertise, and for sharing some of the stories that you have with us. It's been a great hour. It's been a real pleasure for me, Rob. Uh, before we go, uh, Jeff, we started off talking about the ghosts in hospitals. And um, when it comes to those who are on their final days here in this realm, in this reality, do you hear stories about them interacting with those who have passed before them as well as maybe some angelic uh, visitations? It's an amazingly common report I hear from people say that uh, last night they were visited by their deceased mother or father or uncle or brother or sister, whoever. They had gone on before them even some years earlier. And when I hear this, it sort of sends chills down my spine because it's it's as if there's a preparation going mm-hmm. on. And, um, and it, the, the a coincidental experience is when I go in to see them in their room, I feel that there's something else in the room besides the patient and myself, as if the room has become crowded with spirits. And so having heard that from the patient, I get this impression that their time is short. And I have to say in the vast majority of cases, that has turned out to be true. Do you find a difference in the patient as, as far as his, his outlook on life is concerned? Do, do the patients find an inner peace? Yes, in fact, they do. Once they have this visitation, this spiritual visitation, mm-hmm. it's amazing how calm and relaxed they look. And in fact, I often get the impression that they've actually had a they turn for the better, and they're actually getting better. Mm-hmm. And when people say they feel better, they saw their father last night and got some some message that everything's going to be fine, the patient's looking comfortable in bed, and, you know, the next day you go back and they're gone. 
Jeff, what would you like to leave our listeners with tonight? We've got about a minute and a half. I'd like to say that you should keep your mind open to this. I know many people think that believers in the paranormal are in the minority, but a lot of recent polls show mm-hmm. that we are actually you know, in the majority. Yep. 51% of Americans believe in ghosts, and in some communities it's as high as 72%. And so you know, believers uh, outnumber the non-believers, but I would simply say keep your eyes and ears open, keep your mind open, and realize that that humans have a spirit, and this spirit may endure and persist after bodily death. And that experience can be a a very wonderful experience. Jeff, give our listeners your website one more time, please. My website is www.jeffdwyer.com, and my last name is D-W-Y-E-R. I post new things on my website every Monday and Wednesday, so each week there's something more to read, and you can contact me through my website, and I'd love to hear about your experiences. Jeff, I want to thank you ever so much uh, for joining us. We look forward to chatting with you again uh, closer to Halloween. How's that? That will be great. I'll be in New Orleans for Halloween, and I could give you a report of ghostly activity down there post-Katrina. Jeff, thank you very much. Take care of yourself. Look forward to talking to you the next time. Right. Bye-bye, Rob. Bye-bye, sir. Jeff Dwyer, www.jeffdwyer.com. I'll be back on the other side of this commercial break with the news at six and a half minutes past the hour as the Exxon continues from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. My name is Rob McConnell. Don't go away.